Good evening, good evening, good evening, everyone, and welcome to our information session where we're going to present an exciting suite of programs, our tourism suite. Uh, welcome to the Satakor Kefil School of Business and uh, Management at the Kefil School of Business and Management. I'm Sonia Mohan, a member of the department or of the school and the deputy, one of the deputy deans for the Faculty of Social Sciences in which the school resides. We are excited to be part of the University of the West Indies. We are excited to be part of the largest faculty of the campus. And we are definitely excited to be part of the school which offers such programming to you. We aim to ensure our position as the premier institution for tertiary education in the region, and also that which offers the suite of programs that allows us to develop the human capital capital of the region and tourism being our business is one of the set of programs that really distinguishes us from any other offering that you will see here. This evening we have with us Dr. Sherma Roberts who is the coordinator for the entire suite so hardworking Dr. Roberts who is also one of the deputy deans of the faculty and Dr. Roberts I'm going to turn it over to you I'll be your support I'll be your wing woman for the rest of the evening so we'll do your presentation and then I'll, I'll moderate the Q&A um after so again welcome and over to you dr R. Uh, thank you very much mrs mahon and i want to acknowledge um our director which is uh dr dion greenwich and also the supporting staff miss marla thomas and joanie james thank you very much for joining us and the most important people this evening would be you guys who have turned up to hear about the suite of tourism programs in the Kfield School of Business and Management. So thank you very much for taking time out to be with us this evening. So where do we start? The program started um, with the um, BSc, with the MSc in Tourism and Hospitality Management in 2006. I had just uh, come back from England and I was you know, put in the deep waters of helping to launch this program. It started as a partnership with Amman Resorts, um, the now um, closed Amman Resorts. And it was really intended to be uh, an action learning program in the sense that we were meant to solve, or you were meant to solve as students, organizational problems, organizational challenges. So we developed a program um, that sort of came out of our stakeholders. This is something that our industry stakeholders said that they wanted, not, in, not only in Barbados, but across the region. And so, you know, the university does not exist for itself. The university exists to serve its constituents. And our constituents would be the tourism and hospitality industry in Barbados and regionally. So the tourism and hospitality management program began in 2006 and since then we have made some significant changes to the, that program in terms of the, the content um, as you would appreciate as you go along a program you know you recognize some deficiencies and you recognize that there are areas that you need to improve and so we work towards improving or making those improvements in 2009 recognizing that the tourism and hospitality management suite was insufficient to meet the needs of the or the growing needs of a more sophisticated industry we decided to embark on a number of other um, tourism related programs and so was born the tourism and events management the tourism and sport management excuse me the tourism marketing and the tourism with project management. The most popular of them across the years would have been the tourism and hospitality management and the tourism and events management. Within recent times, the tourism and sport management program has picked up quite a bit. Um, the tourism uh, and with project management, which to me is my favorite program, you know, continues to lag behind. And I want to encourage anyone who's working in the public sector in particular um, to really think about embarking on the tourism with project management program. And that is because of my 
experience um, with the private and the public sector, um, recognizing that sometimes they are recipients of donor funding, they are recipients of grant funding, they are recipients of large projects, and the capacity often in these ministries or departments are sometimes lacking to manage these large projects. And so outside expertise um, has to be sourced, which is unnecessary if the, the tourism and project management um, skill is a resident in these departments. So let me tell you a bit about the program. So in terms of student status, you can either be a full-time student or a part-time student. A full-time student means that you can carry five courses per semester. A part-time student, as a part-time student, you are required to, to do two or more courses. If you have been out of academia for a long time, I often recommend to students that they start with two because that gap between your undergraduate study and your postgraduate study can be quite large. And so in order to let your transition be smooth, then you know two courses, you put your feet in the water, you understand the requirements, you understand the commitment, you understand the level, et cetera. Can you hear me? I'm, um, you're not hearing. Hi, Dr. Roberts. Yes, we can hear. Uh, somebody said super low. Oh, uh, Sherma, your namesake is in the chat saying so not hearing. Well, I don't so know. It may depend on where persons are. It may depend on what persons are, but we were hearing you loud and clear. Oh, yeah, I could, I could hear myself as well. So, so, so that, um, you can either do five courses as a full time, which is a status, or three courses as a part time. But as I said, if there's a gulf between when you did your undergrad and when you've embarked on your postgrad, I always recommend two as a taster. In terms of duration, if you're a full time student, the program lasts 18 months. Um, if you are a part-time student, it could also la it lasts about uh, maybe 24 months to two years. So it depends on how you organize your programming. And I always provide for students recommendations in terms of how you must move forward. Um, those recommendations are based on my years of experience. Some students decide that they're going to take the recommendations. Some students decide they're going to do their own thing. If you make a determination that you're going to do your own thing, then you know that you would have to stand the consequences of, of, of your decisions. So part time can be within the university can be up to four years, but most students transition out the way before then. So in terms of program organization, your program is organized across three semesters, September to December. January to May, and in the tourism program, as across all of the other management programs, there's a short summer semester, which runs from June to July. Each of those semesters, you can do core courses. Core courses are courses you must do, and electives are courses that you choose from. So we tell you, okay, for tourism, these are the electives that are being offered this semester. These are the electives for management. These are the electives for tourism. And you make a determination. Now, at your level and your, your investment, a student should not be choosing a course based on that, that lecturer as GAs. Everybody does pass. And that should not be what drives your choice. Your choice should be driven by, does this course or would this course improve or increase my suite of knowledge the knowledge that I want to get out of this program when I leave, the knowledge that would transition me into my five-year or my 10-year plan. Those are the key questions that you must be asking yourself when you decide, I am going to choose this. Do I want to know more about sports and events management? Do I want to know more about sport tourism? Do I want to know more about consultancy management? Do I want to have some kind of idea on service quality? So, so ask yourself, what suite of knowledge, when you think about your electives, do I, don't I have, and I would like to improve?
So I'm going to do two more, um, two more points, and then I'm going to open the floor for questions, and then I'm going to move on. So courses, and so I spoke about the courses being um, over three semesters. The other point I want to make is that you must, for every program, there's a suite of core courses and there's a suite of elective courses. For tourism and hospitality management, you must do nine core courses. Meaning that when we sat down and we looked at the discipline of tourism and hospitality, we determined that this is a knowledge set that you know every tourism and hospitality management student must have. For tourism and events, it is eight core courses and four electives. For tourism marketing, it is nine core courses and three electives and so on. So in terms of delivery, courses are offered across the semester. So you start in September, you end in December, you have a course, you have a contact, three contact hours for each course every week. So across the semester. And then within that summer semester that I told you about, because we often engage adjunct faculty because we want you to have the best experience. So it is not just Dr. Roberts's voice you're hearing as the you know, bastion of knowledge on tourism. You're hearing other voices. You're hearing Dr. Day, who is in the UK. You're hearing Dr. Jordan Miller, who is from Trinidad and Tobago. Um, you might be hearing um, somebody else in another region of the world. Because we want you to have a di as diverse an experience as is possible. And, Without Boston, I would say that the tourism programs have some of the strongest um, experts in the field that come to you uh, in, in very different subject areas. So two academic semesters ago, we had a director of SIDEMA, um, Mr. Ronald Jackson. I mean, you can't get, you can't get better than the director. Live experiences, lived experiences, up-to-date knowledge on um, risk and disaster management, et cetera. So, um, and those modular courses that I spoke about in that semester is delivered over two and a half weeks intensive, meaning that every day for two and a half weeks, you have these three hours. So Monday, you have three hours, Tuesday, so, but you know ahead of time in terms of your work and all your other commitments that you're juggling, so that you know that you know the summer semester is coming up it is modular and therefore i need to set aside this um, suite of time in order to make the best of that so i'm going to stop there um, to invite any questions that you might have yes mrs hey, 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 dr robert um just having a problem there with my keyboard. Uh, two questions. One interesting one. I've never had this question before. Uh, Sharma, your namesake, is asking: At what age do we accept students? Well, we're, we're not ages at the Cape <laughs> School of Business and Management. Once a student feels that he or she is competent to undertake such a program, um, and that student um, meets the criteria, which is a lower second class honors degree or significant experience with some level of postgraduate type um, certification, then that student um, can matriculate into our program. If you're graduated with a past degree, some level of interview is undertaken and that interview would normally be conducted by myself. Just ascertain your readiness, your ability, your commitment to the program and in that interview i make a determination so we have had um across the years we probably have had about five students come in with a past degree and all five students have done exceptionally well and have graduated within the time and um you know with decent grades uh Sid, we do have um we do have another tangential question if you have industry experience and industry qualifications but not a an academic degree, can you still be considered for the program? Or is, is there a pathway into the program? 
we would have to see what those qualifications look like. When you say industry qualifications, we'd have to make a determination. It's difficult for me to, you know, give a broad brush on that one. Right. So if there's anybody in the audience in that in that position, please submit your application so that it can be evaluated. A uh, couple of questions. Cost of the programs. The, the dean has left. <laughs> the director, so I can probably take this one. The cost for the programs is thirty thousand across the board for the programs. Uh, Marta, please, could Miss Thomas, please correct me if I am wrong. And when we have done our comparative studies of the costing of our programs, it is the best value for money that you will see. That thirty thousand is inclusive of resources, including the laptop and any other digital resources that you may need, whether that be readings. Um, whether that be reading studies, textbooks, and so on. So you will not find another program offered or programs outside of the school offered for that price with the set of attention that you're going to get and the relevant access to knowledge and your competency and skill sets that you're going to develop at the end of the program, by the end of the program, as that 15,000 US. Let me convert it just in case there are persons from other jurisdictions. So that's 15,000 US inclusive of all the materials for the program. We do have a question about the delivery of the courses within the program. What mode of delivery are the courses? Is the program 100% online? Uh, for the tourism and hospitality management, I think the answer to that would be yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. For the other um, courses, it might be a mixed delivery, mixed mode delivery. Okay. And I know for many of the programs that we do offer, and some of the programs will share courses, it will be a hybrid format as well, where, mm -hmm. you, where you, the student, can determine whether you want to be virtual or whether you want to be um, in the classroom or a mixture of both, or a mixture, as Dr. Roberts would have said. So there might be a week that you are you're here on the island, you prefer to come to class because it gives you that dedicated time, but you can't get to class. So for those courses, it may be that you have some options, but that will also be clear to you when you come into the program with the scheduling of the courses and the way that they're delivered for that semester. Andres is currently pursuing a BSc degree in tourism and hospitality and is wondering if he, there's going to be any exemption at the master's level for the program of study at the bachelor's level. I decided to let you answer that, Dr. Roberts. Oh, there are absolutely be no exemptions um, because the, the content, the level, the um, skills are uh, superlatively different from what you do at undergrad. And it is a lot more um, a lot more focused at the graduate level than at the undergrad. This tends to be more generic. Yes, okay. you can matriculate into the program to be a scene agriculture science. Yes, you can. I'm gonna come to the thesis part after we get to the um, you know other questions. Um, I somebody asked about the American Hotel and Lodging Association. Right, I'm going back to that and while I check that, um, Janice wants to know if you can start part time and then advance to full time later once you get. I'm and I'm putting in my words here once you get more comfortable. Yes, Janice, that, that's absolutely um, open. That option is available. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ashley, yes, there are payment plans available. Um, you can register. We would love to have the payment up front but many students do pay by semester by the number of credits that they register for of which they register and there are payment plans payment plans available for the program yeah. right and you already answered the one about matriculation dr Roberts. about um agricultural science that i was seeing there a part-time course maybe what is it, 2000 it's about, something? Yeah, it's about 2000 Barbados, a thousand US per course. Per course, yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you're doing yeah. two courses, then that would be 4000 in that semester. Yeah, I think it's a little more, maybe two, three, four, two, or some, something around that figure. Okay. Yeah. And uh, that is exclusive of the student fees. 
So the cost that we're giving you for the program is just for the program. There are student fees that you will need to cover as well. And that's about 280, that's about 280 Barbados per semester. And that is all of the amenities fees and all the other associated fees. You're covered by insurance. You're covered for insurance and so on um, with that fee. Natalia has an interesting question. Can you matriculate into an MPhil and what are the, I'm assuming therefore, what are the research options or research degree options? And I, I, I know your heart here, Dr. Roberts, so that's why I'm smiling as well. <laughs> so, so no, you can't matriculate um, from the masters into an MPhil. You have to either do an MPhil. So MSCs are what you call taught degrees and MPhils are what you call research degrees. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> Simeon, as much as your, your mind tells you that you can do the two of them concurrently, you have to be some kind of genius. Genius not on, only in terms of ability, but genius in terms of time. <laughs> because both of these take up a phenomenal amount of time. So it, it would not be advisable. Something would fall through, a ball would drop, and you know, I wouldn't want it to be you or your family or your job yeah it's very difficult oh and one other thing yeah and just to expand on that there's some students who need to finish a course for their bachelor's degree for example and want to start the master's degree you can't be registered in the system for two programs at the same time so you have to complete your bsc and that acts then as matriculation into the, and we're talking about the MSc programs here, into your master's programs. You have to finish. It's the same sort of um, situation we have occasionally the students, we do have the two plus two program with the undergraduate degree. You have to finish the associate degree, finish, complete, before you can matriculate into the bachelor's degree. So it would be the same thing as well. Yeah. We have a student from another territory and wondering if the programs again are online and therefore they would have access to the courses. The one that we can guarantee that this, yeah. would be tourism and hospitality management. That one we guarantee that is fully online. Tourism project management because it has uh, different lecturers. It is difficult to commit to say that will be fully online. Yeah, so I don't want to create expectations. Mm -hmm that I'm unable to um, satisfy at this time. So tourism and hospitality management, um, the Kayfield School of Business offers that as a fully online program at the moment. We have students from the Bahamas. We have three students from the Bahamas. We have one student from yeah. Guyana who is doing it and um, a couple other students. So in terms of who this program has attracted over time, I think that's an important question. Mm -hmm. You have attracted students from the UK we have attracted students from Canada. We have attracted students from the United States, um, Syria via Canada. And that student did uh, exceptionally well. Jamaica, um, Antigua and Barbuda, Grenada. Wow, St. Kitts and Nevis, Trinidad and Tobago, uh, St. Lucia. So we have really done well in terms of regional pull as well as international pull. So, and those students have all gone on. Um, this semester has been a very interesting one for me because a lot of the students I taught who have now established themselves in their own sphere, in their own country, have now come back and they are doing guest lectures to me. So that is like the most rewarding part to me of this job that, you know, what the seeds that have been sown, you know, you now see the fruits of them in terms of guest lectures. So that has been excellent. Okay. okay, and Michaela was asking about, is coming from Guyana, was asking about the delivery for the MSc, um, Tourism and Hospitality. Uh, are any course outlines available or any program outlines available for the different programs? Yes, the program. Tracy outlines. wants to know. Yes, they're actually available. Well, the programming is available. In terms of yes. the bio of each course, we are still working on that. We, we used to have uh, a very sophisticated book. You might not be able to see it because I'm pixelated, <laughs> but uh, we used to have a very sophisticated book when Ammon um, was our partner that we would give out 
but um, you know, funds doesn't permit us to you know have this sophisticated booklet for you guys anymore. But everything is now online. Right. Um, is there an internship program associated with the master's programs? Right. So that's that's the point I'm getting. To. Okay. I think Simeon had his hand raised. I don't know if you want to take that question, and then I will go into the course evaluation, program evaluation. Okay. Yeah. Simeon, can you post, because we're in a webinar, um, we're in a webinar, we won't be able to hear you live, but if you can post your question. Uh, let's see. Okay, while Simeon posts this question, I want to speak about how the program is evaluated. So I said to you that you have a taught component of your course. When you've come to the end of your taught component, which is 12 courses um, for the most part for most students, um, you have a number of choices at the end. And these are the three choices that are available to you. You can do a, a thesis or a research paper so those of you who might be thinking about going on to do um, postgraduates work, those of you who might be thinking about going on to do an MPhil, going down the research paper route is highly recommended for you. Because when you go on your interview for doctoral study, at least there's a body of work that you have sat down and written and um, researched yourself. And it is often original research. So you can do that. Then the other option is for those of you who might not have any industry experience, you can do an internship, which is three months. And then you have three months to write up a research project. So you might go into an organization and they have a problem, a challenge with absenteeism um, in the hotel industry. And they say, you know, we want to find out, you know, what are the reasons for absenteeism? And you might go and you might dig and you find out, you know, what the reasons are. And you write a, a, a research project. It's, it's, it's um, iMarket and another supervisor, if um, HR is, is the area. And it is also sent to the organization so that they can see the recommendations and take them on board should they wish. So you have that option. And very recently, within the last academic year, and due to COVID and so on, we have introduced an alternative to the research paper, which is a student can choose to do two alternative courses. These alternative courses are pre-approved courses by the Cahill School of Business and Management. So you can't just choose any two courses willy-nilly. You can't just choose courses because you think they will be easy or anything. They are pre-approved courses. And prior to you transitioning um, from your taught, your taught, the taught component of your program, then you say, oh, Dr. Roberts, these are the two I want to do. I send that to the director. He um, writes a recommendation for you and that goes to graduate studies for processing. So that there is a clear process outlined for if you want to do the two alternative courses option. And of course, there is the distinction that each student can get. We don't have like a set number of distinctions we give out every year. We don't say we're only giving people whose name begin with S. In that case, it would be Sherman Simeon. Um, no, we have, once you do the work, once you um, have committed yourself and you've got the right grades, then a distinction is for anyone to get once you know you have fulfilled the A average in your taught courses and the A average in your research paper, your internship or your alternative suite of courses. I open the floor to questions. Um, while you're on the intern, while you were speaking about the internship, um, Sharma, the question was whether the internship has to be done in Barbados or I'm extrapolating that it can be done elsewhere. Yes, the internship can be done anywhere. Um, we often ask students before you get to that part, I normally would have a, a meeting with you and say, are you desirous of doing this? And, uh, and you get the organization for me. I don't go out and search for them anymore. I used to do that. 
um, if it's a cruise ship or whatever, um, and then I write to the organization and say the student is desirous, I give them the parameters, and then the organization writes me back, and there is a whole set of guidelines for you to follow in terms of um, inducting into the internship as well as writing up your research paper. So once they agree, um, you know, they can provide, the, they would provide an internship for you. Sometimes it's paid and sometimes it is voluntary. So you have to make a determination of, you know, do I value experience over the remuneration or do I value remuneration over the experience? Okay, now Simeon was able to type up his question and I'm going to read it verbatim. Uh, since all the courses have an element of tourism management, is the course content on tourism management the same in all the courses, or are they separate elements in other courses? So all, all courses don't have an element of tourism. Um, if you take, for example, um, resort hotel development and operations that focuses on the hospitality industry that focuses on you know how a resort is conceptualized how it enters into a destination um, who are the main players what are some of the parameters that you look at in terms of impacts so that is completely hospitality based human resource management is as it says human resource management so that has no element of tourism in it Accounting for managerial decision making is another course that you do because we recognize that if you are training to be a manager, you need some decision making skills as far as the financial aspect of an organization or destination is concerned. Um, there's a course by the name of consultancy management that trains you up if you, if you have intentions of you know, working for yourself or as a consultant that gives you all the skills that you need to transition into that area. So um, I, I don't think it would be correct to say that all courses have an element of tourism, of course, um, because you, uh, for example, resorts is not happening outside of a, of a tourism context. Um, and therefore there would be some allusion to, to tourism, but the, the main core, the body of knowledge is not tourism centric. It is resort and development and planning centric. Okay. And um, I think Andres, I just wanted to repeat of the, the final courses after you finish all of your taught courses, you had the option to do the research paper or the internship, or you could have done the two courses, the two course electives in yes. lieu of the research paper. So yes. those are yes. the three options for students. Mm -hmm. Those are the three options for students. Um, Tricia, um, I hope I pronounced your name correctly, uh, is asking about payment methods of payment. Often students pay by credit card. So once you have accepted the offer and you're active in the system as a student, you can pay through your student account by credit card, or you can also do bank transfer. Um, those who are physically here in Barbados can also come to the cashier uh, and, and pay by the cashier, but you can uh, money order, bank transfer, credit card. Credit card um, over the recent time has been the most popular option for payment. Any, anything else? I, I am not seeing any other open questions. And just thank yous for the responses coming in. Okay. Sure, ma'am. Um, our daughter Roberts, before we, if there are no other questions. Ah, here is one from Cred Accreditation. Any, accre any accreditation for the tourism programs or any partnerships that we do have? Uh, well, our partnerships, I would say, are more informal than formal. So for example, um, last semester, um, the students had to work with the Barbados Tourism Marketing Inc. So because they wanted to find out what are the best niches that they should explore. And so when I taught tourism destination management, it was a partnership with the BTMI. And the BTMI actually came out, attended, gave remarks, the chairman actually gave remarks and, and, and so on and provided significant feedback to the students. So um, there is no, accreditation um, is something that we have thought about, especially when it came to events 
we wanted students who graduated with tourism and events management to have an events uh, management certification, but we have not, um, you know, really fleshed out that idea and brought it to brought it to any significant fruition. Okay, and uh, can you speak to many of our students will be working, and uh, can you just speak to the I don't want to, I, I did not want to use the word challenge, but having to reposition yourself to come into the graduate program because some of our students are coming from the BSc and it's quite a different experience at the graduate level than it is at the undergraduate level. That's an important one. And I think the people who are best placed to have that conversation with you would be people who have just left and who have actually gone through that experience. There are things that they can tell you. I certainly might not be able to tell you in terms of how did I balance childcare and uh, being a wife, being a husband, being a partner? How did I balance that with work with the, you know, Dr. Roberts and her deadlines and, um, you know, all of that. And, and often um, in our orientation session, we normally invite those students to come in yeah. and have a chat with you. Um, so you can frankly ask them those questions and they will give you tips and tricks that they have used um, across time. The, the one thing that I do, well, we recognize it um, because we are all human. I mean, I did part-time study once in my life. I was working at the British High Commission and I was doing a master's in international relations and I thought I was going to die. <laughs> 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 and I only worked, I, I wasn't even working full-time at the British High Commission. I was working part at the British Council. I was working part-time. So I have this understanding and I, you know, there was no kids or anything, you know, it was just me, but oh my God, it was tough. So it is really a lot of time management. Um, it is really a lot about being realistic to yourself about what you can take on. So I know everybody's gung ho and yes, I'm going to do three. And that's why I always encourage those who are working, those who have been out of study for a long time, do two courses, start with two. Um, start with a kind of foundational course that kind of gives you, so I always tell students start with tourism destination management, which is a course I teach, because once you do that, it really sets a good foundation for all of the other courses because it scaffolds on to other things. And I also tell them, you might want to choose an elective. So something that you have decided you want to do because, because you have decided that it should be fun and, and learning should be fun despite the work. So you kind of do that to toss up. And I think that really helps to kind of get you, you know, ease into, you know, what, what are the requirements? How do you write? How do you research? Now, that's, a, that's some big things I'm telling you about their writing because it's, it's not cutting and pasting from the internet anymore, is reading significantly and wide, wide, widely um, to write, to write um, you know, your thoughts about something. So because of the level of reading that is required, I always tell students who are part-time, who have been out, start with two, because I really don't, um, it hurts when a student you know, has to, for, you know, when something falls through the crack, and I really wouldn't want anything to fall through the crack with any prospective student, you know, your family must be intact after this, your finances, your mental health, and, and all of your being must be in help, must be intact after your program. I just needed to clarify the concept of accreditation. The UWI is an accredited institution. Um, each of the campuses is accredited in country. So there's a uh, something in the chat by Makani about the campus being accredited in Trinidad by the Accreditation Council of Trinidad and Tobago. Similarly, for the KPhil campus, UB KPhil campus, we are accredited by the Barbados Accreditation Council, and likewise Mona, and so on. So the campus itself, and therefore all the programs on that are offered by the campus are accredited and recognized. What we were speaking about earlier were industry recognition. So there are some um, institutions that part that we have gone through their vetting and on completion of the program, students can in some instances sit an exam and get a certification in that particular area. So Dr. Roberts, not to put words in your mouth or to repeat just some of what you said, 
we are looking at the events management, but that does take time and money. It takes it, it does take some time to get that engagement going and to be vetted by the organization. So let me reassure the UWI KFIL campus and therefore the school of KFIL okay, School of Business and Management and all the programs that we offer are indeed accredited and recognized. Um, what we were speaking about, as I said earlier, were the engagements and partnerships with industry specific or discipline specific accreditation, like for the HR, their SHRM, and so on and so forth. So I don't even know if you wanted to be in there again, Dr. Roberts. No, no, you have explained it quite well. It would be very interesting for uh, those who are participating if they can just write in a chat the program that they're interested in so we can get an idea. Okay, well, that, that's great. Yes, if you can in the chat. Take that opportunity. So we have tourism and hospitality management, tourism and events management, tourism and sports management, tourism with project management, and tourism marketing. So Fast and Furious coming, Dr. Roberts, a good spread across, including the one closest to your heart, project management. Mm -hmm. Tourism, so good spread. Okay, Michelle, you're fence sitter. That's all right, two of them are exciting. <laughs> Nicole Whiteman, is that Nicole Whiteman from Grenada? Oh, thank you for that, uh, Marla. Okay, um, um, and those of you who are speaking about tourism marketing, I think since the programs have begun, we have probably only graduated four students in tourism marketing. So I want you to know, not, not that I can guarantee you a job, or you're from Trinidad, okay. You mean you're from Trinidad and Tobago, okay. <laughs> I am only Tobago part of Trinidad, so I always must add that in. Um, what was I going to say? Tourism marketing. Um, we have only graduated about four students. Um, yes, one from the Bahamas, one from Barbados. and two more that I can't remember. So the point I am making is that that skill is in demand. Um, people do tourism marketing by dint of experience, but in terms of the skill set to really understand what marketing is about, it is not really present in tourism ministries or in destination marketing organizations. So it is a degree that I would really encourage anybody to do tourism marketing. In my time, the only place that had offered it was the University of Surrey. So you had a number in, in, in the UK. So you had a number of persons going to Surrey just to do tourism marketing. And it is for that reason we have decided to make it a regional program. But the uptake, interestingly, has been one of the lowest. But it's certainly a degree I would encourage. It is needed desperately in DMOs across the region, desperately. For marketing, tourism, it's a service, it's intangible, it's inseparable, it's perishable. Different from a tinna sardine or a tinna corned beef, very, very different. And a lot of persons who do that job um, fail to make that, that link. And so we end up with brand problems and other problems. Doreen wants to know, can she mix both the project management and event management courses <laughs> here at the Tourism Corps? You have the opportunity, um, Doreen, to do three tourism electives and a one management elective. So in that one management elective, you can certainly pick up a project management course. So that is- that So is they can sort of build to their interests. 
yeah yeah you have that 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 one space in there that you can pick up tourism that management elective you can pick up could be team building and leadership and i know dr greenwich is probably you know thinking you're setting people my way yes team building and leadership excellent there's a leadership course there's a strategic planning and management those to me are some if i was doing a master's again those are the courses i would do when i did my master's in in england this kind of choice was like non-existent you did all sorts of things that you didn't want to do because the 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 programming was so tight you know um but here you have the opportunity to really explore quite a bit of avenues for good or for bad. So I would say take advantage of it now before um, Dr. Greenwich decides to, you know, truncate everything. <laughs> <laughs> okay, before we wrap up, just want to ask you to do the exit survey. Uh, it's been placed in the chat so that we get a chance to evaluate how we did this evening. If you do have any other questions as well, feel free. The Marla, Ms. Thomas is going to put the email address. So thank you, Marla. She put the link again in the chat. And the next start date, we are, applications are open for yeah. the, our August start yeah. or late August start. Well, well, you can, you can come in in January or September. Yes? Yeah. But yeah, I say late yeah. August because that's the we would oh. want to be here by the last week of August typically. Yeah, so you 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 can plan, so you can matriculate in January if January um, is too soon in September. But you have two entry periods, which is quite good. Uh, could you repeat the cost? Right, the cost program, yeah, fifteen thousand U.S. dollars, inclusive of the laptop and other resources that you will need. Uh, that is does not include the student fees though, which is about two hundred and eighty U.S. dollars per semester. But the cost of the program is fifteen thousand. The cost of the entire program is fifteen thousand U.S. dollars. Uh, thank you, Marla, for putting the email address. So if you have any questions at all, please don't hesitate to don't let it ruminate. And do I know the answer to this? I can't find what I'm looking for. Please reach out to us. We do respond very quickly and you have not only the general email address but we also have the email address for the admin assistant in charge of with responsibility for our graduate studies within the school as well miss thomas who's here um, working with us behind the scenes this evening okay dr roberts any final words if we don't i don't have any other questions at the moment everything has been asked everything has been answered ah oh, natalia so has one question what type of laptop will we be receiving uh that really depends on what is available the last suite the last suite were i5s um that's the processor that was in the system so it's not the bottom of the line um laptops but sufficient to allow you to access to do all of the work and even more depending on what it is and something that lasts well beyond the program as well uh, the addresses are still so if you scroll up in the chat so, um, or model you can repost as well um michaela during the we have had to make some arrangements students do pay for the postage I think Dr. Greenwich is if Dr. Greenwich is here. Armada, if you want to speak to that, um, in terms of the resources delivered to the students. Sure. Um, at the moment, what we do, if you are not on island and we are sending you the laptop, we encourage you to visit a DHL or FedEx in your country. You can pay for the postage, et cetera, at the company. Once you send us the information, then they can come to us and pick it up, and then they will fly it back over to you. Um, in terms of the textbooks, we are in the process now, we are having to do ebooks. So once we've received the codes from our publishers, we usually send you the textbooks as well with the codes through your email. So it's very easy for you to get your text as well. And um, Dr. Roberts about tourism marketing. I'll ask you the other question in a moment. Mm -hmm. The for the courses in tourism marketing are those online? 
Dr. Greenwich, can you answer that? I don't want to. He may be signed in, but not listening oh, okay. to us. So, so it's, it's, a, it's a difficult one for me to answer. And the only reason is that a lot of the courses for marketing are delivered by um, adjunct faculty under my purview. So mm -hmm. that can be answered at, a, at another time. Um, William, William. Yes. Email, but by the time you send the email, I'm sure an answer can be made available to you. Okay. And uh, in terms of, yes, the, the student fees are not negotiable. Those are registration fees for the students. So that 280 US is part and parcel of being registered at the, at the UE, whether yes, you're so fully so. online or not. Tracy was asking about um, the courses to compare. Yes, Tracy, the booklet can be sent to you. Um, the booklet can be sent to you so that you can do a course compare, a course comparison, or program comparison. Yeah. So again, just shoot um, an email to whoever you need to send it to. I don't know who is in the chat here. Uh, Marla. Yeah. And um, yeah, Marla would um, ensure that you get a booklet. Okay. And we're in the process of relaunching the website or launching the website, the new website for the KFL School of Business and Management and all of those resources will also be there. Uh, yes, Alyssa, I was quoting the fees for easy comparison in US dollars. So the program fee again is 15,000 US and the average fee for the student fees is 280 US. In Barbados, that's if we double it, it's thirty thousand US and uh, five sixty on average for the for the student for fees, registration fees per semester. And you can pay by semester. Um, we would gladly take it for the entire year, but you can pay by semester. So I hope we have satisfied you guys and any questions you have. I hope we have piqued your interest and more than pique your interest or whet your appetite. Um, so I think a big question for some people would be, so what, what, what happens at the end? You know, where, where does this degree place me? And part of that answer, you would need to provide it. But part of the answer, I would say, is we have deliberately twin tourism with other um, socioeconomic activity to ensure that if you are working in the Ministry of Tourism, that you understand how to leverage events, you understand how to leverage, if you're in Guyana, um, MASH, um, if you are in Trinidad and Tobago, Carnival, if you are in um, Bahamas, John Canoe. So you know it is not just an event but you see the tourism benefits that derive from it. If you are in the events field, then you have a bigger knowledge and understanding that events is not operating as a standalone, it's operating in a bigger tourism context. And therefore you are able to make those networking linkages to ensure that your events, whether it's done in the low season, it's done in the high season, that maximum social, economic, and even environmental benefits accrue to you and accrue to the destination as a result of that. Very often what we have found is that events, people do events and they don't even understand the tourism link. Events, people do tourism and, and vice versa. The same with um, tourism and sport management. How do you leverage sport sporting activities and events to ensure that they deliver what the governments have projected, the foreign exchange, the employment, the multiply effects, and so on. So it really puts you, positions you one foot in tourism and one foot in events, one foot in tourism and one foot in sport, and you are able to bring those big players, because they are big players, to the table to get the best for the destination. And if you are an entrepreneur, the best for yourself. So I hope that I've kind of, you know, caused you to think there about why, why, why this double degree rather than a one. I've already spoke to, spoken to marketing 
and I've already spoken to um, tourism and project management in terms of the benefits that accrue to you um, when you have these types of skills. Okay, um, Makani is in tourism education and wants to get your recommendation for which program would be best suited for her. Oh, that's a good one. It's <laughs> depends on where you see yourself in five years. That's that's all I say because I, I can't. You know, you, you do you intend to stay in tourism education? My colleague um, in Saint Augustine, Dr. Okola Cameron, tourism education is her research area. Um, and she, you know, she is a lecturer, of course. Um, so it's where, where you see yourself though. So when you think about which of these programs I want to choose, ask yourself, where do I see myself in five years? And, and work back from there. Oh, great, Michelle. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. We have events operations management. We have sports and events management. We have service quality. We have a risk. We, we do a course called risk crisis and disaster management. And we know having gone through COVID or going through COVID, we know how important that, that course is. Yeah. So even as an event planner, you need to understand, you know, areas around risk and, and disaster. Because stadium have fell on a lot of people and killed them because the risk wasn't well managed. And Michaela was asking about the possibility of somebody picking up for her a laptop. She comes into the program, she gets accepted and so on. And uh, yes, they can. I'm sending you also to just follow through with Ms. Thomas with a, well, with the procedure, but our, our, we will want to ensure that this is with your permission. So you would have to send, um, Oh, it was Catherine McConney. So my, my apologies, Catherine. Um, he said McCon McConney Catherine. <laughs> so first name was, was Catherine. Right. Um, so you can send a letter authorizing somebody else to pick up on your behalf. Uh, generally, I would think if you're sending that letter through your email, it would be definitely through the KPhil mail. You want to ensure that it is indeed you that is given that authorization. But you can follow through with Ms. Thomas about those procedures. And Catherine is not interested in moving out of the education field. Sherma, Dr. Robert, she loves education and that's where she sees herself. In terms of hospitality, it's fine. Mm -hmm. Okay, we are about to wrap up. So again, a reminder and uh, um, Marla, could you post it one more time? Please fill out the exit survey for us. And uh, very last words then to you, Dr. Roberts. Well, it was a great pleasure. I haven't done this for a while and it's a shame I can't see your faces. Um, it's always nice to have that connection um, with your prospective constituents. And really the UWI is, uh, has a strong tradition of excellence. Um, if tourism was offered in my time, I would not have gone off to England, um, but you have the opportunity and we really have a great suite of courses for you. So we look forward to welcoming you in September, in January, um, to join this great tradition of excellence. So thank you so much for your time and thank you for your attention. One person said, a mind stretched by a new idea never returns to its original dimensions and that is what happens to you when you choose this tradition of excellence at the uwa so thank you and have a good evening and thank you again let me echo dr roberts's sentiments for taking the time out to engage with us this evening uh, for this information seminar or this information webinar about the suite of offerings in tourism we look forward to seeing you in september or in january as you take us up on this offer. Thank you so much and have a good evening. Stay safe, everyone. Lovely, yes. Thanks, Dr. Roberts. You're welcome. Just get the, the list of the, um, what people were interested in. The, does this, does this uh, chat save? Yes, we will save and uh, Marla, then you can send on, once we save it, we'll be able to see the, 
the what they were interested in and who was interested in which program. Yeah. Exit exactly. survey also, and that's where we want to fill the exit survey as well. That also gives us more information as well. Oh, okay. okay, great. Thank you very much, guys, for organizing. It was um, well done. So, I don't know, it was my show. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, I'll take it up an ante, but uh, yes, <laughs> well, it is all natural. Day. All right, yeah. take care, guys. Terrific as usual. <laughs> all right, bye bye. <laughs> bye, -bye. <laughs>